the cities and the growth of the cities because of all of the immigrants coming over to the country in the late 1800s. In 18, uh, from 1870 to 1890, through our 20 year period, the population in the United States nearly doubles. 40% um, of those people are going to live in the city. They're going to be city dwellers. Uh, New York, Philadelphia, and Chicago each had over a million people in their cities. Uh, that was pretty incredible. And New York City, by 1900, has 3.5 million people in it, which makes it the number two most populated city in the world. Number one was London. Now, what are the positives and negatives of living in the city? You guys mostly know these, so this is just a review. So the positives are, in the late 1800s, they start building up. They start building skyscrapers because real estate was so valuable. Um, with the invention of the electric elevator, this was really quite a natural progression. Um, transportation was really easy in the cities. You could get around easily. You had access to things. You had access to things like culture, shows, museums, libraries, education. Uh, all of that was available in the city. In the cities, they also had electric, which was kind of a cool thing. And, oh, here's a, here's a novel idea. How about indoor plumbing? Um, you had increased opportunities in the city. There were more jobs available. Uh, and of course, shopping was regularly available. You didn't have to go very far to get what you needed for your home or for yourself or to, to feed your family. Now, the negatives are basically still the same as the negatives today. Cities are very, very crowded. Um, they're crime-ridden. Uh, the crime rate is definitely elevated in the cities. Look at our top murder rates. <laughs> um, and cities are also very dirty, whether it's the pollution from factories, whether it is trash thrown in the streets, sanitation. Um, there was no real garbage pickup, so the cities were really, really dirty. Uh, and of course, um, over the years, the number of slums would increase in the cities. Now, we have two types of immigration in the United States in the 1800s. There was old immigration, which we're going to review real quickly because you guys have already learned this. That was pre-Civil War immigration, and those people were from Western and Northern Europe for the most part. So the British Isles, including Ireland and Germany, Scandinavia, that's where people were from. Now, generally speaking, people from these areas that came to the United States were generally educated. They were English speaking. They could read and write. They were literate. Um, many of them had some money. So they could come over and they could buy land or they could settle somewhere. Um, they weren't desperate to find work necessarily. The, the Irish were a little bit different in this area um, because they were pushed out with the potato famine, but most, most immigrants had some money with old immigration. They were Protestant for the most part. So this was, they, they blended very easily with the various religions in the United States as far as Protestant religions. And that's mostly what we had. Um, and they had experience with representative democracy, especially coming out of England. Uh, they would have experience with representative democracy. They were used to the idea of voting for someone to represent them. Then we transition into new immigration. And this happens, um, after, really after the Civil War, so this 1880s mark is really where you mark new immigration. 1850 to 1879, we have six million people come over in about a 30 year period. By the 1880s, there's five million per decade. So it basically triples. Now, where were these immigrants from? They were from Eastern and Southern Europe. So they were Slavic, Italian, Jewish for the most part. Uh, they were from Greece, they were from areas like Croatia, Bulgaria, Russia, um, so a lot of uh, Eastern and Southern European. Um, Poland was another um, uh, country that people emigrated from. Now, what were they like? They basically had very little democratic experience. These were, they were coming from countries where democracy didn't exist, so they didn't understand voting and, and uh, democratic participation. Um, they were largely illiterate and poor. And when I say illiterate, I don't mean that they were stupid by any means, but what I mean is they didn't speak or read English. They wouldn't coming from these areas. So we considered them to be illiterate. Um, and they were very poor. They didn't have money when they got here. They were desperate for work. They, worked, they were clamoring to get jobs. They settled in the cities uh, in large part because that's where the opportunities were. And they stuck together. So this is where you see little Italy's pop up or little Poland's um, because they were comfortable among one another and they stuck together. Um, now, why did they leave Europe? 
They left Europe because they were getting pushed out. There was no land left, um, and poor people couldn't buy any land, so they, uh, they left because there wasn't any land to be had. They left because there was no work in Europe either, uh, in a lot of these southern and eastern European countries, and they wanted the opportunity to work in America. Um, they left because they were persecuted, um, which is spelled wrong. Um, they were persecuted in Europe. Um, so they left for that reason as well. Um, particularly the Jewish people in Poland were being persecuted by, actively by the government and in Russia as well. You had the pogroms and so forth and they pushed the um, people of Jewish faith out. Now, US industries also began recruiting people to come over recruiting for jobs if they needed them because this was a cheap labor source, recruiting to get votes and representation in their states. There was a little bit of uh, underhandedness about this politically. Um, but, but companies began to recruit people to, to uh, come to America. 25% of those who come over during new immigration would go back to Europe. Now, who were these people? These were young men who would... Um, come over to Europe and uh, they would work for several years to make some money and then they would head back to Europe in order to better support families and so forth uh, or marry the ones they loved. Now what's the reaction? There's positive reaction to the immigrants coming over to Europe. Um, there was this whole idea of the social gospel which meant that um, we would embrace the immigrants, we would help them out, we would extend a hand. Um, and that was a, an idea that was forwarded by Walter Rauschenbusch, that, what a name, um, and Washington Gladden. Those two guys forwarded this idea of the social gospel. Um, and then you had Jane Addams, who was a, um, a middle class woman, lived in Chicago, and she forms Hull House. Now the function of Hull House was to take immigrants in and help them transition easier to American society. So they would teach them English classes, they would teach them writing, they would uh, teach them about how to get a job and how to keep a job, how to cook with American foods. Um, whatever it took to really help people integrate easier to the United States, that's what Hull House did. Um, their basic function was education. Uh, then you had Florence Kelly, and she really worked hard for workplace reform, especially for immigrants, but also for African Americans, for women, for children, uh, to lower the working hours that were required, to heighten wages, uh, to better conditions, that idea. Um, so that's what Florence Kelly did. Then you have the negative reactions to immigration. Um, and the government really does very little here to ease the trans transition from Europe to the United States. And there, of course, were those who were corrupt and would try to buy the votes of immigrants. Hey, come live in my neighborhood. I'll give you some, some money. You can go vote my way today. Vote for the guy I like. Um, and then you had this whole idea of nativism, and that was this fear of immigrants um, and uh, this whole idea that immigrants should stay where they came from. They shouldn't come to the United States. And there was this real prejudicial feeling among the nativists. Um, it was also known as xenophobia. Um, so then you have the American Protective Association and they were an organization that actively worked to vote against Catholics. So real prejudicial um, and uh, uh, religiously based prejudice too. Um, so interesting group there. The anti-immigration laws that were passed by Congress, they tried to prohibit paupers, so poor people, convicts, criminals, in, the people who were insane, who had communicable diseases, uh, polygamists, and prostitutes. So you could see that their, their discrimination didn't end with a religion or with a color or with a sex. Man, it went all over the place. And then in 1882, Congress actually votes to ban the Chinese altogether. That would get thrown out in a couple of years. It doesn't last.